Hey everyone and welcome back to Ubuntu Lost Videos. Um, in this video I'm going to go ahead and show you the systems, or I'm going to let you explore the systems area. The system, preferences, and administration. I'm going to split this video into multiple sections because it does take some time. I've already done many videos of the same area and I haven't been able to put it into the same a good amount of time. And since I only have 10 minutes, I need to f hurry up and rush through it. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, basics of this is the preferences are there for your customization and the feel of your computer. Uh, we've already done the appearance. Uh, we'll start with the about me and I'll go down the list. So clicking on about me, we have a window that comes up basically putting information about you. You can change the icon by clicking right here and changing it to one of the icons already given. Or of course you can use your own pictures. On the very left here you can pick the folder and pick the picture that you would like. I'm going to go ahead and just keep it with the chess. I like chess, and I'll just keep it there. Next, we can do email, telephone, instant messaging, your address, your work, and web and job, this personal information. This stuff is only shared with yourself, and of course, you can choose to put them on if you decide to make a document or an email to your friends and stuff like that, and or colleagues and, or those types of people, and you can actually automatically put this information in without actually have to constantly retype it over and over again. It's very useful and also it makes it more your own. This is you, this is your computer, everything about you is in here. It makes it more personal. And again, it only this information only stays with you, no one else can take it. We then have the appearance. In appearance, of course you might find this window familiar if you've seen my previous videos it's the same exact window if we were to right click on a desktop and change desktop background the exact same uh, area which is this starts with backgrounds this starts with themes I've already shown you how to use this this is just another way to get there after that we have assistive technologies for anyone with disabilities clicking on preferred applications we have the ability to set a, a screen reader and magnifier. It's very useful for those that can't see very well or even close to being blind. This actually reads the screen for you and helps you out use to use the computer. <coughs> Next, and then we also have mobility on board or you can do a custom application on your computer. And again, we have keyboard accessibility, uh, sticky keys, slow keys, bounce keys, like every other system, and mouse accessibility, simulated second click, and dual clicks. Next we have the Bluetooth. Uh, very simple to set up and very useful. Basically, uh, turn on your device, uh, turn on the visibility of your Bluetooth, and then set up new device here. Little wizard will pop up. Just go ahead and click forward, and it'll start searching automatically. If your device is visible, you'll be able to see it in this list of devices. You can use a filter to input what kind of device it is. If you're uh, setting up your phone, click phone, and it'll filter by phone. Uh, network, camera, printer, so on and so forth. Very useful. Uh, after you find a device you're looking for, double click or just click it once, highlight it. You can do custom pins here. You can do, or just press forward afterwards and it'll set up, uh, your phone will pop up with a pin and just put in the pin that shows afterwards on this device. It's very simple to set up, very layman's, and that's basically it. And afterwards, after you set up your Bluetooth, you go into this icon, you click on it, and you have the phone right here under devices. And again, you can send files or browse files, like any other Bluetooth device. After Bluetooth, we have the default printer. And here, basically what it says is set the default printer for your system. You just go ahead and click on whatever printer you want, set default, and that's it. Nothing else to do in here. Afterwards, we have the display. Very useful and very you know simple to use again. All of this is meant to be used as simplicity. <coughs> we can change uh, the resolution. All of this as what my monitor and my video card supports. The refresh rate, rotation of the whole screen, normal, left, right, or upside down. Most of these are used if uh, you're in an awkward position or if you're laying down you want to read a book or watch a movie, you can use one of these orientations here. You can show displays in panel. Basically, when we click on or enable that, we see this little display icon here, and now we can do change the rotation from this menu here, or we can just open the configuration menu from there. And mirror screens, this says what it says. Uh, it, if you have an external monitor, just mirror the exact screen that you see right now. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to go ahead and disable this icon. 
like so. After display, we have the file manager, or file management. This is the exact same window as if, if we started from a folder and then we clicked on edit and preferences. The exact same window, they do exact same functionality, it's just different ways to getting there. Um, basically this window is for customizing your file management. Uh, these are different views available to you, the uh, default view, icon view, compact view. You can change the zoom level, compact layout, and all this information here. But the looks of it, the behavior of your file management, do you use a single click to open, do you use a double click, uh, run executable files, include delete command that bypasses trash, and so on. Display, icon captions, date, list of columns, things you want to see uh, in the details area of the views details details the compact or the default view preview files um, test shows you a thumbnail of your file of course you can do local always never depending on if, you, if your file is bigger than some amount of megabytes you will not show it and the most uh, common you use here is what to do when your CD audio is plugged in DVD video is plugged in music players plugged in photos and so on you can customize it or you can always have it ask what to do you can open the folder with the audio, you can open the rhythm box with the CD audio and start playing automatically and so on. And that's the simplicity of that. Afterwards we have the iBus. Uh, this is just a wizard to install uh, the necess necessary files to have a Russian or Korean or Japanese uh, language installed in your computer. Because they do not use Latin characters, you will need to run this to actually configure it so you can see, view, and type it. Afterwards we have the keyboard, and the keyboard, again, uh, we've been in the accessibility already, it's the key keys and so, we can do repeat keys, we can do cursor blinking, layout, we can change the layout, we can add different layouts, um, I'm going to go ahead and just look at uh, Bulgaria, we can see a layout right here, all of it is preset, you can see a preview right there, and you can decide if you want that or not, you can actually print it, and put it somewhere so you know what keys do what. We can do accessibility mouse keys, you can actually move your mouse uh, with the keyboard. Typing brake, uh, this forces the, the keyboard to pretty much lock up, so you can take a little break to prevent carpal tunnel. And of course down here we have a little testing area. Afterwards we have the keyboard shortcuts, very very useful. And here we can set shortcuts, we already have presets for volume mute, volume down, volume up. You can set it to anything you want. I have already presets for my computer because it has special buttons for all of these. You can you have for desktop stuff, logging out, suspend, accessibility, magnifier, screen reader, window management, uh, alts to move back and forth between desktops and move between windows and so on. And we have a custom shortcut right here. I've already added one. Let me go ahead and remove it and show you how to actually do it yourself. Now, basically just add here. You name it something, whatever you want. I'm going to name it Firefox. I'm just going to give you an example of Firefox. Press apply. Uh, notice that this is a command. You want to use lowercase, or depending on what the program is, you want to be sure that it's, it's very case sensitive. So if you mistype even this like that with a capital X, it will not work. So we know it's regular. Now the shortcut, we just do Control Alt F click on that and then do control out F to set it. Now any time we click control out F, we will find that our Firefox is welcome and greeting us happily. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the next areas in my next video.